Match number two of the afternoon session. This is the final session of round robin group games. Ten of them. This is number two of ten. And then we reconvene at eight o'clock tonight to find a champion. Four quarterfinals, two semis and a final. One winner of the Gary Forbes Trophy. And next we take a look at David Dornan, who's already out. Played three, lost three. Martin McIntosh, very much not. Four points, played two, one, two. And I hope you packed your shades, because whenever Mad Mac is at the table, it does try your eyes with his choice of trousers. Popped into the commentary box just to let me know. As if I wasn't going to see them when he was waltzing around the table. Great character though, Martin. Very nice lad. Done a lot of tireless work behind the scenes here in Aberdeen in the organisation of this event and so good now to see him having a good run on the table too given how distracted he was with all the preparation off it and he's first in here I have news. I just wanted to pop out and check with the referee on that previous frame. And it, it wasn't a shot clock or a match clock issue at the end there. It was actually Mark Ball jumped the white off the table and conceded the frame. So it means that David McNamara actually won that match three frames to one instead of two frames to one. Which doesn't seem that important. But when you look at the group and you see three guys tied on four points each and it looks like it's coming down to frame difference, it improves David McNamara's frame difference and puts him top of the table. Right, well. well that could prove a big moment, therefore. It really could be. They're both, well, all three guys at the top of the table have another match left, so, it, it, but it could still all come down to frame difference and... That'll be a big error from Mark Ball if that's the case. Simon Fitzsimmons, the third player in that trio, locked at the top of Group 3. And actually... I think the last match, or second last match of the afternoon session, we'll see Simon Fitzsimmons play Mark Boyle. So that may well be an effective last 16 match. The winner would qualify, the loser would be out. Of course, that all depends on how David McNamara goes in his last match of the afternoon where he plays Barry Nicholl. From what we've seen so far this weekend... David would be a nice warm favourite for that match. Barry hasn't played his best ball, but we've seen some strange results out there and Barry's more than capable of pulling off that victory. Not ideal. Full of contact would have knocked the black towards the bottom right corner. He's still on this to the right centre, but now it's missable. I don't think the yellow's going to be hampering his queuing. Well, that's a big surprise to see him go for the double. That didn't look to be on. The pot looked to be the shot. That's the, the shot of a man who's already been knocked out of the competition, I think. There was no jeopardy in it. What's the worst that could happen? I'm out anyway. <laughs> and that is the problem with, with group stages or can be the problem with group stages. Martin's looked good. We spoke to him at the last event when he found some reasonable form in, in Newbury and he said he felt he'd underperformed over the course of this town shootout series. But he's he's brought that form from the last event here. Surprised himself, I think, with the way he's played so far this weekend. He's 
is dragged back enough just to allow him to play it over the middle pocket rather than over the cush. And he rolls it in and Mad Mac strikes first. McIntosh leading Dornan by a frame to nil. Race to four, remember, in the group stages. That opening frame has uh, pretty much been the story of the tournament for Davy Dornan, who is already out, as we have said. Lost his opening match 2-1 to Fatty McCarran. He then lost 3-1 to Fraser Allen. And then earlier on today, he lost 4-1 to Darren Matthew, who looked like he was starting to round into some form. But Davy's been getting some opportunities, getting some chances, just hasn't been able to get the position at the back end of frames and at the key times to be able to win the frames to give him more of a chance in those matches. He jumps the white right off the table. A shot and a visit for Martin. Will look to open up this bottom right hand part of the table. And he'll be pleased with that. If he wants to, he can play yellow onto red and then take reds, but reds are definitely the colour set. Yeah, he calls those his CFAX trousers. They're impressive. I'm not sure if they're as impressive as the kilt, but he's... Well, I think I'd rather look at those, to be honest. Well, I think that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> this is Martin's third match, and he's entertained us with the choice of trousers and kilt so far. Well, there's pressure. You put pressure on yourself when you're wearing stuff like that to, uh, to back it up on the table. So far, he has. Nice touch on his pull shirt as well. The tribute to Gary Forbes, local legend as well. That's where the Gary Forbes trophy has been named. That's what a lot of these players are playing for in his memory. He would have loved to have been here and witnessed this big advocate of pool in this part of the world. It's not easy to get onto this black. It's not a good angle. He may be just straight enough to screw into the red, the yellow that's next to the red and take the black from distance. The problem with doing that, every chance he's going to leave himself hampered. He's screwing, he screwed past the yellow, so he, he's not going to be hampered. Just needs to watch the white, certainly after what we saw in the previous frame. Mark Boyle's in off. Uh, he's just cut back to take the angle of the in-off away. And just like that, Martin McIntosh doubles his money. Mad Mac leads by two frames to nil. The form continues for Martin McIntosh. Looks good in his opening two matches. Look good so far here. Bad break from Davy Dornan jumping to white straight off the table. It was a messy table, but Martin made very light work of it. Well, he's made a ball off the break. problem he's got is the position of the black. Well, he's now created another problem. I was going to say, the yellows are sitting really nicely. And you'd fancy him to get to the black. But the black is in a horrible spot. He's knocked the yellow safe with his opening shot, so he may not get that far now. Yeah, he was trusting to chance a little bit there. Hoping to open up that cluster on the right-hand side even more. Hasn't done that. Yellow still stayed safe. Not 
Oh, what a pot that is. Well, <laughs> trusted that to look as well. And he got the look he deserved, really, with the cannon out. He may be able to go close to dislodging this yellow this time round. Not quite. No, he's missed it. And for the diagonal double. Well, the problems for Davy Dorn and Aless in terms of he has to clear the red to the right of the black before he plays the black. He may want to clear that sooner rather than later if he's going to go for the clearance and he's going to. Shorter pace, wanted to be on the red he's nearest to and he's not. Yeah, he's hit trouble immediately. shot very delicate he's going to need another one though not sure what he does here just the long plant that's a very high tariff oh <laughs> well sometimes when you miss it by that far you create an angle for a fluke in another pocket can he capitalise it's the perfect angle to get on the black just needs it to fall it hasn't and that's going to be 3 0, I think. Annoyed with himself, but he got lucky with the fluke. And this is straightforward now for 3 0 for Martin McIntosh. Job done for Martin. Takes that 3 0 lead. Just under eight minutes left on the clock. He's not, not going to be looking to run this match clock down, though. He's going to want to get that fourth frame, get the points on the board, get the frame difference up, and move on. Fairly simple scenario for Martin when it comes to the group stages. He's won two from two so far. A win here would put him through safely. Darren Matthew could still overtake him at the top of the table, but he would be guaranteed a top two finish, which is all you need to do. The problem that Davey's experiencing from the break, he's going for the cut break. But if you go for the cut break with power, the white is going to fly off the table. And we've seen it too breaks on the trot uh, that's some distance away also from Macintosh we also haven't reached the colours assigned stage Martin did get a ball down on his free shot but it was a free shot, so it doesn't count in terms of assigning colours. Not sure if there's enough of the yellow showing below the red to pop that without moving it. it might be just about enough.
Oh. <laughs> He'll take that. That's some very uh, impressive reaction he got off that white from Hampered Queuing. This for 4-0 in 15 minutes. Oh, he's just gone and given it a smack. No idea why he played it like that. Another fluke. Davey's been racking up the flukes this weekend. Well, he's another miss. That's going to be his last shot, I think. Handshake. Doesn't even need to see Martin make the black disappear. 4-0 for McIntosh. Puts him through to tonight's quarterfinals, the home favourite. Three wins out of three for six points. Dornan was already out. McIntosh now through. Kean Monaghan is already out, but can he cause problem for Jordan Shepard, who needs a victory? That's our next match after this break. Yeah, he thought the white was straight into the middle pocket. It stays out. This one, all back to back this afternoon. Quarterfinals from eight live on Free Sports TV tonight.